Okay, this is an interesting little sidebar for you. It's a special treat. I consider it a special treat. It's our book review that's not a book review. As you know, we love talking to authors and uh, hearing them describe their books and the process they went through. We were recently interviewing J.A. Jantz, one of our favorite authors, a mystery writer who's written over 70 books. And we were talking to her about her latest book, which is called Den of Iniquity. It's a J.P. Beaumont mystery novel. And of course, we talked about her career. And up comes the subject of one of her very first books. Right. And the book is really a collection of poems it's called After the Fire. And it was written during the uh, first uh, 10 years or so or whatever of a, a first marriage, which was a uh, um, was not a very happy situation. And her husband wouldn't let her write. He uh, forbade her from writing. And... Uh, uh, she, uh, during the very quiet time in the early mornings, uh, when he came home drunk or he was out all night or whatever, she would write poems. And this is a collection of her poems and let her tell her story about how it got written and how it influenced her finally becoming a writer. My first husband told me in 1968, shortly after we married, that there was only going to be one writer in our family, and he was it. He was right about that. There was only one writer in our family, but <laughs> that was another that was you. <laughs> But so he had a severe drinking problem. He died of chronic alcoholism at age 42, a year and a half after I divorced him. He, he missed half his life. <sighs> but We'd come home from, we were teaching on the reservation. We'd come home, we'd have dinner. He'd be passed out cold by 6.30 or 7 o'clock at night. And so I sat at the dining room table, jotting off these little bits and pieces of poetry and hiding them away. He never saw the poetry because that was my secret. I wasn't supposed to be writing them. And so he never saw it. And... I started writing those poems in the late 60s and continued writing them off and on through the 70s. And after he died, I had to go to the strong box, box to get out the documents you have to present when someone dies, birth certificates, marriage certificate, divorce decree, all of those things. And I found the poetry and I read through it. And it was like seeing my life in instant replay over those 20, 25 years. Because when I started writing those, those poems, the creative part of me already understood that our marriage was doomed, that the relationship was doomed. But it was another 13 years before the conscious part of me caught up with what the creative part of me already understood. So that that book is about that journey. And I was writing those poems while I was in the trenches, while, while we were dealing with his drinking, while he, when I brought my baby home from the hospital, we spent five days going through DTs because he'd gone on a bender the whole time I was in the hospital. So those poems are, are really right there. And the title poem of After the Fire goes like this. I have touched the fire. It burned me, but I knew I lived. It seared me, but it made me whole. He called me. I went gladly, though I saw the rocks fell laughing through the singeing air. I have known the fire. I'll live with nothing rather than with less. The flame is out. There's nothing left but ash. And my whole 
writing career, my whole mystery writing career came about after living through that initial fire. And so if you are in an addictive relationship of some kind, it's very isolating. Other people don't want to be around it because it's messy and they don't want to be involved. And, and it, the same thing happens if you have a cancer diagnosis in, in your family. People, other people stay away because they have no idea what to say or do. I was in Phoenix doing the book tour for Blessing of the Lost Girls last spring. And the lady sitting by the bookshelves in the front row said, after the fire saved my life, everything that happened in our family was a secret. And then I read after the fire and I realized I didn't have to keep those secrets anymore. So after the fire, is a really important book. I, in Chehalis, a woman had me sign after the fire for her to give to her daughter, who's in exactly that kind of a relationship right now. And it's a third party referral because it's not advice coming to her from her mother. It's advice coming to her from someone who has lived the same experience. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.